Greetings, grace, and peace to you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and welcome to Evolve Online Worship here at Bradley. I'm Pastor Dave, and I come to you from my home office in Greenfield. I'm Pastor Heather, and I come to you from my home office in Shelbyville. And I'm Kathy Book, and I come from you to you from Indianapolis, Indiana, downtown. We want to remind you that we will continue to offer our in-person worship service at 9.30 a.m. in our sanctuary as long as it is safe to do so. Also, the service recordings and our midweek week devotionals are always available on our website at bradleyumc.org by clicking on the online worship button, and there are several of those. You know, the current pandemic has thrust us all individually and communally into a period that requires careful experimentation with new ways of living and new ways of being. The stakes are incredibly high and the storms we face are potentially immense. Today we'll explore how we, as the church that proclaims Jesus as Lord and Savior of all, can leverage this time of high experimentation in healthy ways for the good of God's kingdom, church, and world. Thank you for being with us this morning. We're glad you're here. Welcome to worship. Please allow me to call us to worship. This is Psalm 85, a prayer for restoration, verses eight through 13. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our, in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Let us pray. Holy God, you speak to us in a voice unexpected and come to us in ways we do not recognize, never leaving us to our own devices or defenses you are the ever-present, all-powerful God. Call us out in faith again and again until we learn to walk with you in steadfast love and faithfulness and in peace. In the name of him who comes to us upon the waters, Jesus the Christ the Lord. Amen. May God's blessing be upon the ministry of the word. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word is very near on our lips and in our hearts. As this word is read and proclaimed by the power of your Holy Spirit, make it become in us the word of faith. Then send us in joy to bring this word to others who also need the good news of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. None of us ask for this, but like it or not, our entire world has presently been thrust into what I'm going to call an experimental phase caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Here's how I've experienced this phenomenon. First, there was the lockdown. For Carmen and I, this was an experiment in how we might get along in our retirement. We learned some things, but the experiment was a great success. We are looking forward to retirement together. After the lockdown retirement requirement uh, subsided, another experiment emerged as we all started venturing out again. I had stopped playing pickleball, which was my main source of non-church related socialization and my only source of physical recreation. As the pandemic numbers continued their downward trend in Indiana, I decided that on Memorial Day weekend, I would start playing again. 
Well, this experiment failed miserably. We played all weekend long, and then on the Tuesday after Memorial Day, one of our group came down with the virus, and we all scrambled to get tested. Fortunately, none of the rest of us were infected. After the initial scare pass, we went back to playing. But now with the numbers increasing again, I have stopped. My experiment returning to play pickleball will be ongoing, it appears. But really, that's just the nature of experiments. To experiment is to try something with no real idea whether it will work to monitor the results, to determine the relative success, and then based on that, to choose whether or not to continue or adjust. Experiments are tests. They test whether an if-then statement we call a hypo hypothesis is true or false. Sometimes the hypothesis is valid, sometimes it is not, and sometimes it's not clear either way. Take, for example, the experiment we've collectively undertaken with wearing masks. I think for some, the jury is still out on whether masks help, but I think we have collectively decided that they don't hurt, so now most of us wear them. The trouble with the experimentation phase that we find ourselves in today is that the stakes are so incredibly high. We've all watched and listened as our community has made the decision to experiment with sending our children back to school. It, it seems to me the hypothesis goes something like this. If we don't open our schools, then our children could be developmentally damaged and our economy might suffer. It's a reasonable hypothesis, but the stakes are high because of the highly contagious nature of the virus and the historical reputation of the schools, fair or not, as places where illness spreads easily. That created the need for another hypothesis. That hypothesis goes something like this. If schools have the proper protocols in place, then the risks of infection can be mitigated. You know, I pray every day now for our teachers, our students, and administrators in, in hopes that this will all work out well. But I also pray for wisdom for them to remember that what they are doing is, after all, an unproven, never before attempted experiment that they may have to abandon if their hypotheses fail. And even without the pandemic, Experimentation is, is important. It's how we humans figure out much of life and the world around us. And I think our gospel lesson speaks to the virtues of a good experiment. The disciples are on a boat. Jesus is missing in action. He's gone up on the mountain alone to pray after feeding 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and, and two fish, and that's probably fair. From evening to early morning, the disciples in their boat are battered by a fierce storm. Here again, the stakes are high. The possibility of death by drowning seems uncomfortably great. But then Jesus shows up walking across the water toward them, and initially they are afraid. But as they realize that it is Jesus, not a ghost, Peter decides he'd like to do an experiment. He asked Jesus to call him out of the boat to walk on the water in the middle of the storm. His hypothesis seems to be, if Jesus calls me out there, then I should be able to walk on the water just like Jesus. And it works. For a moment, anyway. But then Peter succumbs to fear, and down he goes, crying out to Jesus, Lord, save me. And this prompts Jesus to immediately reach out and pluck Peter from the waves. So what does Peter learn from his experience? What does he learn from this experiment that he's undertaken? Well, the rather obvious point of this lesson is that faith trumps fear in all situations. 
And this is not the first time that the disciples have weathered a terrible storm in a boat. The last time this happened, Jesus was asleep in the stern. Yet like today's lesson, in that story, he calms the winds and the seas and then questions the disciples' lack of faith. But Peter learns a couple of other new things here. First, he learns that it's, it's okay for your experiment to fail. And secondly, he learns that, that if it does fail, he can cry out to Jesus and be saved. I think it is these additional learnings that cause the disciples to also proclaim with Peter that Jesus is Lord, truly the Son of God. So what might we learn from Peter's experiment? To begin with, we might recognize how similar our situation is to the situation of the disciples on the boat. As it is for us today, Jesus has gone to be with Dad, and we are left to face our storms physically alone, just like the disciples. And, and look at the storms that batter us today. Political unrest and partisan politics divide us, not just from our neighbors, but in some cases from our own families. The continuing unresolved issue of systemic racism has rallied protesters, politicizers, and criminals to the point that we all seem to have trouble telling them apart. And all this is happening in the middle of a pandemic that threatens the lives and the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. We know about storms, and I'm convinced that it's high time we all collectively cried out to Jesus to come and to save us. But truth be told, before all these storms appeared, the church was already enduring its own storm. Sure, there was the human sexuality thing that the Methodist church is dealing with, but the church really, in a broader sense, has been suffering from what I'm going to call the what we've always done doesn't work anymore, but we don't know what to do otherwise, so we'll just keep doing what we've always done, even if it doesn't work, Storm. How's that for a line of words? And that Storm, it's a doozy. Our boat is battered. And, and, and folks, I believe right here and right now is where and when we could learn from Peter. Peter takes a chance. He tells Jesus he wants to try an experience. And look at what Jesus says. He says, go ahead. I'm thinking Jesus may have known how the experiment was going to end, but he also knew that there were lessons to be learned and that it was okay for Peter to fail, that he had his back. Likewise, the church needs to move our experimentation into high gear and see failure as an opportunity to learn, adjust, and then try again. The stakes are high. They're high for the kingdom, church, and world collectively. Friends, the problems we face today in our church and in the world are not going to be healed by a church that doesn't come up with some creative new things to ask Jesus to help us try. The takeaway for us, I think, is threefold. Do something new. Rely on Jesus and think of failure as an opportunity to find a better possibility. The great virtue of this lesson is that at its essence, it is exactly the process of experimentation. If whatever we try works, do it again, only better. If it doesn't work, Try something else. This very day, we are experimenting with new forms of both online and in-person worship. And soon, we'll be experimenting with how to operate our preschool safely and effectively in the middle of a pandemic. These are not easy problems to solve. They are much like the storms the disciples face that could easily leave us battered and drowning. But the good news is, Jesus is Lord, and whoever calls on his name, as the Bible tells us, will be saved.
In times like these, I think the words to Hillsong's classic worship song, Cornerstone, would be an encourager, encouraging reminder of our lesson today. Hillsong sings, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord. Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. And now let us respond to the proclamation of the word by reciting together this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we lift to God the cares and concerns of our hearts for our congregation, community, and world, let us respond to God with thanksgiving as we give thanks to God with our prayers. God of power and love, you are with us in every circumstance of this life. We thank you for your steadfast faithfulness. We thank you for the gift of your peace which comes to us even in times of chaos and fear, trouble and doubt. We thank you for your powerful arms of mercy that grasp us when we are sinking, for your powerful word that coaxes us even when we are hiding and afraid. We put our trust in you, for you alone can save us. We ask for your power and love to overcome the chaos of the nations. In every place of war, 
Send your encompassing shalom to restore and repair all that is torn and broken. We pray that violent and hostile struggles will be defeated by good. Give us faith and courage to follow Christ so closely that divisions are dismantled, reconciliation is accomplished, and love casts out all fear. Increase mutual understanding and a sense of unity in our community, in this congregation, in the church around the world. In our personal relationships, bring healing where there is estrangement and hurt. In our relationship to your creation, give us creativity and perseverance as we work to be faithful, tender stewards of all that you so wonderfully made. We entrust to you your providence and care all those who suffer all who are hiding from you from others or even from themselves because of fear or feeling of unworthiness to one struggling with doubt increase faith to one enduring persecution or prejudice bring freedom for those caught in the grip of anxiety and uncertainty, grant the calm rest that your peace alone gives. And for all who face illness, pain, or even death, we pray for restoration and wholeness to fill them in heart, mind, and body. You alone can save us, Almighty God. Hear our cries to you, we pray. Gather us up and set us in safety, and we will praise your name. We ask all things in the name of Jesus Christ, who truly is your son, and who loves us and taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we close, I would ask you to note that the poster email that brought you to the link to this online worship experience contains a link to our online giving portal. As you feel led, please use that link to give thanks to God with your gifts, tithes, and offerings. Or send your offering directly to the church at 210 West Main Street, Greenfield, Indiana, 461. Four zero. We continue to be thankful for your generosity. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now go in peace to love and serve your Lord in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Be safe. Be encouraged. Be blessed. And be God's. We'll see you next week.